Somehow I've managed to scrape together yet another international tour of increasingly horrible manifestations of male privilege for you. If you listen to the last installment, you'll recall that I promised something exceedingly horrible this week, and surprise, surprise, I found something. But before we get into that, we'll start with some good news. Good old Pope I don't do the nickname bit Francis is continuing his commitment to meaningless gestures of goodwill to distract the media from his glaring lack of actual reform. This week he's doing it by sending out emissaries to forgive all those sinful women who murdered their 16-celled pre-children. That's right, the Vatican is sending out what they're calling missionaries of mercy to remind women who have had abortions, as well as doctors and nurses that have assisted in the procedure, that God still thinks you're evil, but he's willing to forgive them. And if that sounds suspiciously like not changing their policy at all, congratulations, you're starting to catch on to the Pope's M.O. And as patronizing as that little backhanded photo op is, the segment is going to get a lot worse from here on out. Because the next subject is rape, and the story comes to us from that progressive mecca, Malaysia. And it turns out that according to Parekh Mufti Tan Sri Harasani Sakaria, who is a person apparently and not a hockey team, there's no such thing as marital rape, because wives don't have the right to refuse their husband to begin with. He even backs that up with verse by pointing out that his perverted child-fucking prophet once said that even when you're riding on the back of the camel, when the husband asked her, she must give. So yes, part of being a proper Muslim wife is the occasional camel handy. That's giving a guy on a camel a handy, by the way, not beating off the camel. As misogynistic as their culture is, I felt like that needed to be clarified. So, one story about abortion, another about rape. How do we make this all worse? How about we combine those topics in a 10-year-old? This one comes to us from Paraguay, not 1826 like I first suspected. This absolute horror of a story starts when a 10-year-old girl is raped by her stepfather, then takes a turn for the worse, yes, for the worse, when her government refused to allow her to abort the resulting fetus. It seems that in Paraguay, abortion is only legal if the life of the mother is in danger, and apparently only when it's really in danger. The likelihood that she'll make it through this pregnancy without serious damage to either herself or the fetus is vanishingly small. But that doesn't matter because Health Minister Antonio Berrios can think of another time a 10-year-old got raped and had a baby without dying. I'm vexed. This vexes me. So sorry, but it looks like I'm going to have to leave you on yet another horrible note. I've got my fingers crossed that nothing in next week's news cycle is going to be worse than that one, but if past performance is any indicator, I'll be closing on a similar apology next week. And with that, I'll hand things back over to Noah and Heath.